Health care stocks were slightly higher today on the eve of that full House vote to repeal and replace Obamacare tomorrow. Passage of the new American Health Care Act is no certainty, but President Trump is confident and while in Kentucky earlier this week named his next health care target. Take a listen. Once this is done, we are also going to work on bringing down the cost of medicine by having a fair and competitive bidding process. And we're just adding that to the bill. I said we got to add that to the bill. We're going to do a bill later. We're trying to add it to this bill. And if we can't, we're going to have it right after. For more on what's ahead for drug pricing and drug companies, we're joined by David Bonson, who's founder, managing director, and CIO at the Hightower Advisors Bonson Group, and Les Funlider, asset management portfolio manager at E Squared. Uh, thank you both for being here. And David, first to you, uh, you know, the drug companies specifically, where do, what do they stand to gain or lose from passage of this bill? I actually think that what the president said is true, that what they want to address, what he's alluding to, uh, which has a lot of political heat around it, isn't going to end up being part of this bill. It'll be something that they want to address later. And I think he's already shown his cards as to what addressing it later means. I think he means it through better reform at the FDA, that they intend to speed up the process of drug approval and eliminate a lot of the regulatory kind of uh, hurdles that exist that are keeping drugs from getting to market at a reasonable time, that will have the effect of bringing prices down. What I don't believe he means is a full-blown, almost kind of statist mm -hmm. drug pricing mechanism. Le uh, Les, you have the same takeaway from all this? Uh, well, my, my view is there is no mechanism by which we can do bidding, so I'm not sure um, what he means. And in fact, the HHS secretary had said, had mentioned the FDA reform. Uh, I actually don't necessarily see either one happening in the near term, uh, but I think that it's going to create a lot of volatility in the sector. And so I, you know, in terms of stocks, I'm probably inclined just to wait this one out and see, yeah. uh, see what happens over the summer. But you did have a couple names that you think will benefit no matter what happens, uh, like HQI. Right. Health equity, cotivity. I mean, these are things that uh, the Republicans have, uh, you know, or areas where the Republicans have said, we really want to do health savings accounts. We really want to make systems more efficient. So in terms of being an affirmative, uh, I mean, they're not drug stocks, but you also don't have to uh, deal with the volatility around uh, errant tweets uh, should they arise. And David, I guess in the absence, if we somehow could transport, our, transport ourselves to a world where it wasn't uh, so dependent on headline risk potentially or potential or maybe even opportunity and policy moves, would this sector be attractive? Would the big pharma stocks, would some of the biotech stocks just be a no brainer without all this or is it all just kind of interweaved? It'd be a complete no-brainer, Michael. I mean, what we're talking about with names like Amgen, Merck, are some of the strongest balance sheets and some of the most impressive operating cash flow stories that one could buy in the S&P 500. Amgen has doubled their operating cash flow over the last five years, from $5 billion to $10 billion, and their dividend is up 6x. They have increased it 600% in just five years. You got compounding dividend growth at that kind of rate and all types of pipeline R&D type opportunity. So we think of some of those names with good balance sheet strength. Now, when you look at the biotech sector and go downstream, there's definitely a lot more risky names out there. I wouldn't want to paint the big names and the small names all alike as far as risk. But I think that some of the broader names that are strong dividend payers would be no-brainers. And I would say with or without this headline volatility that certainly will exist for a little while longer. Les, as we continue to look at the votes and consider whether AHCA passes tomorrow or at some future point, how much hinges on that from your point of view for these drug names? From a long-term perspective, uh, having lived through now, I'd say four healthcare reform efforts. Uh, in the long run, not a whole lot. So if you're a long-term investor, you can ride it out. If you're a trader and you want to trade from the long side, I would say wait. Uh, you're not going to get penalized, especially in the big caps. They're not going to double on you uh, before we have a resolution. And, uh, and quite frankly, we're going to have a resolution one way or the other, probably by May. So you won't have to wait that long. And then, then you can yeah. go back and revisit the fundamentals. It'll just feel like an eternity. <laughs> yes. uh, thank you both. Les Funlider and David Bonson talking about the biotech names here.